So here we have uh, one problem on equilibrium. A couple of problems are always asked on equilibrium in Newton's laws of motion chapter. So let me first tell you what exactly is this equilibrium. Whenever the forces acting on a body are zero, oh, oh that, that does not mean that there should be no forces acting on the body at all. There may be hundred and odd forces which are acting on the body, but the resultant should be zero. Then the body will be in equilibrium. But let me also uh, remind you people here that according to Newton's first law, equilibrium does not always imply that the body should be at rest. It could be at rest also or it could be moving with a uniform velocity. Even if it is moving with a uniform velocity also, the acceleration will be zero and the net force acting on the body will be zero. But in the present problem, what equilibrium implies is there are some set of forces which are acting on the block, keeping the block at rest. So let us read it. A mass of 10 kg is suspended by a spring balance. It is pulled aside by a horizontal string so that the spring makes an angle of 60 degree with the vertical. The new reading of the spring balance is to be found. So here let me share a couple of points associated with the spring force also. See how do you write the spring force? It is written as Kx where K is the spring constant which is basically the amount of force which needs to be applied on the spring to produce a unit deformation in the spring. What I mean by deformation is either elongation or compression. So to produce a unit elongation or compression in the spring, the amount of force you are supposed to apply on the spring uh, is nothing but the spring constant. So Kx is how you are supposed to write the spring force. Now another aspect of spring which is also very important in problem solving is how is the energy stored in the spring written or how is the work done by the spring written. So as regards energy, you can always use the formula half kx square to write the energy stored in the spring where x is again the deformation. See when I keep repeatedly telling you deformation, you should understand that the deformation has to be always measured from the natural length of the spring and natural length of the spring is the one when it is neither compressed nor elongated. So x being the deformation in the spring, k being the spring constant, half k x square is how we write the energy stored in the spring. Even if you want to write the work done by the spring also, you can use that particular formula. But please remember that work done can be positive or negative, right? Spring force is always negative, but that should not send a wrong signal that the work done by the spring is always negative. Spring can do positive work also, spring can do negative work also. So having understood the sign, you can always write half kx square as the work done by the spring, where x is the present deformation in the spring. Now here is a question on the spring. So let me read it or I think we have already read it once I believe. So now I will just draw a free body diagram of what all has happened in the given situation. So this was the initial position of the spring when the block was suspended and now it has been pulled aside horizontally therefore it has taken such a position. So this is the horizontal force that we people have applied, call it as F or T or whatever. So F is the force horizontal direction which we have applied on the spring. This is the spring force, the spring has got elongated and just now as I said spring force can be written as Kx and this is the weight of the body which has been suspended. Now if you look at the geometry of the situation, you can understand that this angle has been given to be 60 degree. So this angle will be naturally 30 and you can use Lamy's theorem here because there are only three forces trying to keep the body in equilibrium. So making use of Lamy's theorem, you can get the value of the spring force. So let me write it for you here. It is one of the forces divided by sine of the angle between the other two. So if you take mg, the sign of the angle between the other two forces will be 90 plus 60 that is 150. So it will be sine of 150 that will be equal to Kx the spring force divided by sine of the angle between the other two which makes it only sine 90 and equal to F divided by this is F divided by sine of 120. Now if you solve this equation 
you will get the value of kx. So kx will be mg by sin 150. So kx will be mg by sin 150. mg is nothing but 10 kg weight. See, I am using a gravitational unit for the force here. I have not multiplied by g. So I am not going to write it as Newton. It is only I have taken the mass and called it as kg weight. So 10 kg weight is the gravitational force on a mass of 10 kg and sin 150 turns out to be cos of 60. Cos of 60 is nothing but half and therefore the answer is 20 kg weight and that is the first option there. So first option is A is correct. So here is uh, one more problem on equilibrium. Let me read it for you. See this is a network of strings, but it is only a part of a bigger network and right now it is in equilibrium and all the strings are tight. The tension in the string AB has been given to be 10 Newtons and you are supposed to find out the tension in BC as well as BF. See appears to be very scary, but because it is a problem on equilibrium you have to just understand that the net force acting on any joint like C is one joint here, B is another, F is another, D is another. So take the forces acting on any of the joints, that joint has to be in equilibrium means the net force should be equal to 0. So because he has given you the tension in the string AB and he has asked you the tension in BC as well as BF, let us make the free body diagram of the joint B. See this is B. This string is AB in which the tension is given to be 10 Newtons. This is the point B. And then there are two more strings here like this. This is BC and this is BF and B should be in equilibrium. Now if you look at the angles, see my plan is to use Lamy's theorem. Therefore you have to notice the angles there. Now this angle is going to be 120 this angle is already given to be 120, this is also given to be 120. Therefore, Lamy's theorem says the force divided by sin of the angle between the other two forces should be constant. So if you write 10 divided by sin 120 should be equal to BC divided by sin 120 should be equal to BF divided by sin 120, sin 120 will be common in that equation and therefore BC will be equal to BF will be equal to 10 Newtons and therefore the option is C. C is the correct option. So this is a very very simple problem. It is based on Newton's third law. But let me add a little bit of explanation for that. See uh, what is Newton's third law? It says action and reaction are equal and opposite. But why don't they cancel each other? See I think that is a very confusing question for few of us here. Action and reaction they are equal and opposite still they do not cancel each other. The reason for this is they are always acting on two different bodies. But if both the bodies are included in your system, then certainly even that pair is also going to get cancelled because action will also be on your system, reaction will also be on your system, both are equal, both are opposite, so they get cancelled. Let me give you a simple example. I am standing on the floor. My weight is acting on the floor and the reaction of the floor is acting on me. That forms an action-reaction pair. Don't ever say or be of the opinion that mg and normal reaction are action and reaction only because you find them to be acting equal and opposite. mg is acting downwards, normal reaction is acting upwards and you may feel superficially that they being equal and opposite they form an action reaction pair. That is simply wrong because you see both of them acting on me and as I said action and reaction never act on a single body. You will always find them acting on two different bodies. 
Okay, now let us come to the present problem. See here he says, a student is confused about these laws, uh, Newton's laws of motion, especially the third law. And he attempts to pull himself up by tagging, by tugging his hair and he will not succeed. See he wants to, he has been fed up with these Newton's laws, he is unable to understand. So he has held his hair all by himself in his hand and he wants to lift himself by tugging his hair and he does not succeed. But this person wants to know what exactly is the reason behind. Would you like to say that the force that he has applied on his hair is very very small or there is not enough friction between his hands and the hair and that is the reason the hairs are getting slipped from his hand or NLM that is the Newton's laws of motion are not applicable to humans or the force applied is internal. And I hope you agree that here you cannot say the force is small because you can, you are always at liberty to apply as much strong force as you want. Friction is small is also ruled out because you can always hold your hair tight in your uh, fist. And Newton's laws of motion are not applicable to humans is also ruled out. The correct reason here is the force applied is internal because with your hands you are trying to apply the force on your own hair. You could have applied the force or you could have held the hair of your friend and you could have certainly tried lifting him upwards. But holding your own hair with the help of your own hand will make action as well as reaction cancel out because you are applying the force by your hand and you are applying the force on your hair. So action is also on you, reaction is also on you, both will get cancelled, both are equal, both are opposite and therefore net force acting on you will be zero and you cannot move. So fourth option is the right option here.